Crystal's Corner. Today we have Doze Zima. He doing? is a 26 year old New York native and he is from Dallas right now. So today we have him on the show as our unicorn. And I call him a unicorn, guys, because he's a virgin. Whenever I found out about that, I just had to interview him. I just had to ask him more about his commitment, about how he's doing it, like, what do you mean? So today we're going to talk more about that, and we're going to really just get his answers and his perspective to how he is 26 and how he has kept this for so long. So Delzy, can you share a little bit about yourself with the audience? So, um, as you hear, I'm 26. Right now, I'm a chemist. I'm a lab technician. I actually work in the lab in Dallas right now. I personally train and I model. That's all Jesus Christ. So I didn't ask to be a model neither, but uh, God blessed me with it, so I'm doing that. And um, as she said, yes, I am a virgin, fighting every day to be a virgin. <laughs> and um, it's, it's just been an amazing journey with Christ. You know, me and God, we doing this, we doing this walk, you know, so uh, it's been a blessing. Yeah, that's crazy. That's awesome, though. Um, so at what age did you make this commitment? Like, has it been a lifetime thing or was it a coming to Christ thing? Like, how did that go about? So there's not a official age when I decided to be a virgin. Um, I started saying in middle school mm -hmm. to just get my homies off my back. Mm -hmm. I was a little too shy at the time. And uh, by the time middle school came around, around sophomore, junior year is when I realized, hey, uh, I think God is kind of yeah. making me do this. He's making me say this. So I realized, but initially I started, it was just, I was just saying it. Mm -hmm. And then God was pushing me. He obviously made it real for me, so. Yeah. Did you ever feel um, pressured by your peers? Did you ever feel pressured by society to just get it over with and just not be a virgin anymore? Okay, so. I am not a peer pressure person. Mm -hmm. uh, if everybody's going left, I'd be the one going right. And just know if I was going left, it's because I wanted to go left. Mm -hmm. If you, anybody knows me knows that. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, uh, every now and then, you know, in high school or whatever, somebody mm -hmm. might pressure me to do it. Mm -hmm. But you must have lost your mind if you keep talking. <laughs> if you think you what you're saying is going to phase me, nah, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Like yeah. If I'm going to mess up, I'm going to mess up. But it's not going to be because you told me to mm -hmm. or you suggested. Yeah. So, no. what are some practical ways that you help keep yourself from falling? Like when temptation is near, when it's like calling your name, uh, Dozy, Dozy, it's me. You know, how do you fight? Like I know you played for the NFL, uh -huh. so you know there were girls sliding in them DMs, yeah. sliding in their room. You know, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you fight? Uh, the best way that I fight is running to Christ. So the word of the Lord says flee from temptation. Mm -hmm. It never says stand and fight in temptation. I think that's people's biggest mistake. They're like, I got this. Mm -hmm. Mean, you know, hey, I'm prayed up, whatever. But you also hear people tell you all the time one thing led to another. Yeah. So I learned from other people's mistakes. I don't I don't <laughs> have to experience it. If you messed up, good. Tell me, good. I, I learned with you. I, I watched you cry. Alright, we got it. Yeah. So when I'm in, when I hear about situation, when it gets close, I have a pause moment. I always have a pause moment where I'm like, Jesus, this is about to go down. And mind you, the line's right here, but I'm right here at this moment, and I know if I go here, it's gonna go across. Yeah. So I'm like, hey God, I have a pause moment. I'm like, God, if I do this, what's about to happen in my life? <laughs> and I kind of run it down in my head, and I'm like, God, can should I do this? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to the crib and I'm going to talk to you. Just dolo, forget everybody, forget everything. Let me just go home and let me talk to you. And that is my solution. That's my source. I run to him and we talk. We chop it up. I tell him I tell him exactly how I'm feeling. I tell him exactly what I'm planning on doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly what I was offered. And I let him know I really want to do this. Like, I really yeah. want to do this. Uh... And by the end of my prayer with him, mm -hmm. or by the end of the talking, he'll talk back to me, let me know, and I realize it's not, it's not it. happening. Not even realize. He'll tell me it's not worth it. Yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm good. Yeah. I get it. That's so real. That's, I think that's real because I think a lot of men get to that point that you're talking about, that mm -hmm. little line, mm -hmm. and they always end up crossing. And they're yeah. like, God, you know, help me. But I think that your, your alternative is, man, let me go see Christ for myself. Mm -hmm. Let me hear from God myself because this may not even be worth it. You know, yeah. it's like the apple. In the Garden of Eden, it looks good. 
it looked amazing but it didn't mean it was going to be good so i think that that's a really good method to use when fighting i think that's a really good method for you guys out there watching so the next question is would you consider this the hardest commitment you've made in your life absolutely <laughs> absolutely uh abstaining practicing celibacy waiting till marriage mm -hmm. is the hardest thing i've done in my life yeah. the hardest thing because um I love women, you know, mm -hmm. like I love women. And if, I'm not even gonna say if I wasn't saved, what I battle sometimes, honestly, just now, is wanting to be with multiple women. Mm -hmm. So I don't wanna be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting every now and then, it's not a big fight, mm -hmm. but it's just a little thought that comes up, is wanting to go from woman to woman to oh. woman. So that's like more of a battle now where I'm like, look, it comes up and I'm, I'm cutting it off. Mm -hmm. But the battles have changed in my life. And that's one of the things, you know, so in college it was more, hey, I just wanted to have sex. Mm -hmm. Hey, now it's like, hey, she's fine. Mm -hmm. She's what I want. Now it's like, hey, she's fine, she's fine, and she's <laughs> fine. You know what I mean? So it's, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's a different thing, but that's where I'm at now. So. Yeah. And that makes sense. I think that as women, we never really understand, like, why men have that kind mm -hmm. of phase. Like, I want all of them. Or it's like, oh, they're all trash, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's a genuine struggle, I mean, for men and for women, you know, um, just to be with more than one person, I guess. But I think that it's so, so cool that you're being open and honest. Because, like, on Crystal's Corner, we like to keep it very real, very, very authentic with our viewers. Because the Christian life is you know it's it's, real. Yeah. it's not easy you know it's yeah. gonna cost you a lot a lot of dying to your flesh you know mm -hmm. you're basically going against your biological mate like as a man you're going to want to go for these people yeah. you're gonna want to do these things but man because of god you're choosing to submit submit your body as a sacrifice to god and for his will and for his glory ultimately so that's amazing that's my next question is do you have an accountability partner like do you have a church that you get plugged into a community that holds you accountable to your commitment to being celibate i absolutely do so um in new york i have a church back home called appmi apostolic prophetic powers ministering internationally and uh, it's a long name <laughs> <laughs> i was like dang <laughs> it's a long name but um they are my rock. Um, they have my back, of course, through Christ. Mm -hmm. God uses them to lead me. But um, I, they're my heads, Apostle Milton and Apostle Bernadine. Mm -hmm. And uh, their husband and wife, they're, they're my spiritual mom and dad. And I call them up like th throughout the week. Mm -hmm. I call them up and be like, hey, look, I'm this, this, that. What do you see with this? I'm struggling with that. So they are mm -hmm. my backbone, you know, yeah. in Christ. Of course, Christ, Christ uses them to lead me and to help me out. So yes, I've grown to a point where I can walk on my own, but I just you never forget, never forget your parents. Mm -hmm. Never forget your parents. So I have been growing with them. They have my back yeah. through, through this walk because you know, I couldn't do it alone. If it wasn't for them, this story, <laughs> if God wasn't using them, this story wouldn't be where it is right now. You know, so yeah, that's amazing. So for your future going onward, you know, mm -hmm. are you looking to be in a relationship with someone or to ultimately marry a woman that's a virgin, or are you open to whatever God has for you? I'm open to whatever God has for me. Um, I don't care if she's a virgin or not. This, this world is mm -hmm. what it is. You know, there's so much struggles now. Matter of fact, it's if she has kids now, it's just at my age. The way life is gone, mm -hmm. that could be the greatest blessing of my life. Or she could be have no kids or mm -hmm. be a virgin. That's still a blessing. Yeah. But I'm looking at her spirit and what Christ is telling me about her. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, that's where I'm right now. Am I walking with Christ? You know, yeah. it's, it's it really doesn't matter. It's, it's what Christ is saying. Mm -hmm. And of course, where she's at with, at with Christ and how she views him. Yeah. If she loves him, if, if he's real to her and stuff like that. And I'm looking, yes, for marriage, mm -hmm. for a wife. Yes, I am looking for that. Okay. So y'all heard that? He's looking. So um, I don't know. Don't pursue him. Let him come pursue you. But <laughs> there are men out there who are looking um, to be committed, you know, to be committed to a God-fearing woman. So it's so important that as women, we do our part in seeking Christ and allowing Christ to make us into that woman for men. Not only just to marry, but just for God's glory too. You know, it's not all about marriage, not all about getting married, but we definitely want to become the people that God has called us to be ultimately. So is there anything that you'd like to add before we wrap this up? Um, There is. Uh, I just want to highlight just anybody that's waiting until marriage or anybody that's that's abstaining themselves and just wanting God to bring their spouse or whatnot. The the way I've made it so long or the way God has been using me and pushing everybody else is the reason why. A lot of people's reason why is for a spouse. 
for your husband or for your wife. And that is not right because your reasoning is for an imperfect person. So obviously your journey is going to be imperfect now. You, you mess up. You run into a lot of dead ends because of that. Your reason should be Christ. Mm -hmm. If your reason is eternal, then your strength will be eternal. So you have to, Christ has to be your purpose for abstaining. A husband and wife, that's cool. But at the end of the day, when you go to heaven, it's not going to be about your husband yeah. and wife. So I just want to let everybody know your purpose, your reason why should be for Christ. Something Christ-based. It should be something with an eternal strength. Because you can't draw from a man and woman that's imperfect. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the best thing I would say. That's really good. Because that was actually a really good point. Because I feel like as Christians, we kind of have this mindset like, oh, I'm going to abstain until marriage. I'm going to abstain because I want my man to know that I waited for him. But no, like our lives are for God's glory only, solely. You know, everything else that comes in our path is just an additional factor to it. But we have to cultivate that mindset that, man, I'm going to live a life of celibacy for God because it glorifies God and it pleases him, you know. So um, there needs to be that obedience factor and not necessarily a I want a man I want a woman so I'm gonna you know abstain from sex like no you're not worshiping man you're worshiping God so we have to go back to the drawing board and make sure that we're actually worshiping the right thing right now in our lives um so thank you so much Dozier for being on the show today I know this has blessed so many people even women as well because honestly like I said this guy's a unicorn and many other guys like him are unicorns too because they just almost don't exist like they almost don't exist, you know, so I'm so thankful for um, having him on the show and being able to show you guys that they're real. I found a unicorn, so um, <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I will see you guys next time on Crystal's Corner. Bye!